enough of that. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's B. Avery here. Thank you so much for tuning in to my spoilers review for Star Wars The Last Jedi. Realize I did say spoilers, 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 because I'm going to spoil this movie up, down, left, right, in, and out as if you've already seen this film. But I'm pretty sure everybody has seen this film. The box office came out and the estimated is $220 million domestically, which is the second biggest opening in history in the united states the first is the force awakens which came out 2015 but again spoilers so if you have not seen this film star wars the last jedi and you do not want to be spoiled i strongly suggest you turn the video off now you can subscribe to my channel go to my videos i do have a non-spoilery review so go ahead and check that out so let's go ahead and get into this guys i don't know how much long or how long this is going to be excuse me excuse me um we're just going to have to see what was I about to say? I forgot. I oh, yeah. This video is going to be super duper relaxed um, if you couldn't tell already. So, you know, hey, it is what it is. But, yeah, guys, um, I enjoyed the movie for the most part. Um, in my non-spoiler review, I gave the movie an 8 out of 10. And I may change that rating by the end of this review. It just depends on how I feel, to be honest with you. Um, it may stay the same. It may stay the same. It may go up. It may go down. But you're just going to have to see. But I really did enjoy the film. Um, I liked it more than The Force Awakens. Uh, while I did enjoy The Force Awakens, uh, I just, you know, I thought The Force Awakens just copied too much off of the ep out after Episode 4, A New Hope. But I still like Rogue One better than, you know, this movie. Um, you know, so the Force Awakens ended with uh, Ray's character Daisy Ridley going over to the island and finding Luke and giving him the lightsaber. This is gonna be my lightsaber, this pen, and she gave it to him. And that was like the perfect cliffhanger. I was frustrated. I'm like, damn, man, we got this Star Wars movie coming out. We've been waiting for so long, and then we only get Luke at the end of the movie. Okay, well, hey, when the Last Jedi comes out, it's going down. We're gonna be seeing Luke with the lightsaber and Master Jedi and all this stuff. And so she gives in this movie, she gives him the lightsaber, and what does he do? he looks at it grabs it and just throws it over his head like this and i was like what okay but let me pick up my lightsaber i don't want to disrespect it too much um and he throws it over his head now i necessarily did not like that i was just kind of like uh you know I, I don't know if they were just kind of making a joke i, I kind of would have liked for him to you know look at the lightsaber you know embrace it a little bit just like you know oh man you know, how like a little flashback of him, you know, and return to the Jedi and then like dropping it or something like that or giving it back. Just like, no, I don't want no part of that. And, you know, I don't know. But him throwing it over his head, that was just like a little goofy for me, you know, and I necessarily just wasn't feeling that. Um, but overall, I'm not going to go over this. I'm not going to. I was about to go through this movie scene by scene, but the way I talk, we'll be here for three and a half hours. Um, let me let me click this monitor what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna go down the list on imdb and look at all the characters names and i'm gonna just okay so yeah mark hamill Lou skywalker is first okay I, I i i'll just go ahead and say this guys i really didn't enjoy Lou skywalker in this movie i did but i'm so pissed off that we did not get to see luke skywalker in a real lightsaber battle like that I, I mean, look at it like this. Okay. We have the original trilogy, right? And there was some cool lightsaber battles in that, but this was in the 70s and 80s. So the technology just wasn't there. Then we had the prequels. You know, in episode one with Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan and uh, I cannot believe I'm forgetting the other Jedi's master's name. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the guy that uh, the Taken guy played, Liam Neeson. I, what, what, I forgot his name. Qui-Gon Qui Jinn? I, I forgot um badass lightsaber battle with Darth Maul right and then um uh, the um Revenge of the Sith episode 3 badass lightsaber battle right cuz we had the technology right so then we get this new Star Wars thing we like oh this new Star Wars trilogy coming out we like oh snap the lightsaber battles are going to go down. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have Mark Hamill, you know, back Luke Skywalker. He's going to be like a master. So we're going to get these nice ass lightsaber battles. But we didn't get into episode seven. Then we had to wait a year with Rogue One. Didn't have none of that. So I just knew going in that we're going to get at least one lovely lightsaber battle with Luke Skywalker. And we didn't get one. So I'm just like, damn, that really sucks, right? And so what was cool is Luke is so powerful now. 
that he is able to project himself across the galaxy, levitating, doing his meditation thing, you know, in the little base and out there with Kylo Ren and all that. That was dope. I liked it. That, that was lovely. We've never seen anybody doing that before in any Star Wars movie. You know, it's kind of like he just took the force to the next level. I appreciate that. Ryan Johnson, the writer and director, he did a great job there. So I was really frustrated. And I would have been more accepting that we did not get a, a Luke with a lightsaber battle. Like, okay, maybe he can come in episode nine and just give us one scene with a great lightsaber battle. But no, he dies. Or he becomes one with the Force. And that really ticked me off, man. I was just like, no, no, no. I understand that he really exerted himself and he was just so tired and that probably killed him or whatever. But they could have kept him alive. They could have gave us one or two things. If if they would have given given us a lightsaber battle and earlier in the film and then killed him or then he died and or, you know went with the force okay that's fine he he's died he's dead he's not gonna be here no more in episode nine or other films other than a, a force ghost but hey we at least got one lightsaber battle or they could have not given us a lightsaber battle and kept him alive for episode nine. But no, you going to not give us a lightsaber battle with Luke Skywalker and kill him? I I was really frustrated there. I, I just didn't like that. I mean, when he was on the island, he really said, I'm not leaving this island for no, no matter what. And I get it. I understand. They gave us somewhat of a valid reason why. But I was hoping that since he learned that Han, Han Solo, uh, uh, Harrison Ford, yeah, that's his name, Harrison Ford, you know, since he died, I was hoping that could have motivated him to, you know, you know, pick up his lightsaber and you know get dust you know dust the dirt off dust you know all that and uh you know leave the island but no we, we didn't get that or whatever now the stuff that he was doing with ray on the island like his daily routine i kind of thought that was disgusting when he got the the milk out the titty of the walrus on the mountain that was kind of gross or if he could have if he would have drank that milk or whatever and not had that little smirk on his face maybe that would have been fine um you know but he was just like yeah milk does about good you know i liked the little thing he had with the long stick and he was catching the fish that was pretty cool i like that i like the little uh caretakers on the island you know that was cool when uh when ray was doing the forest thing that was really behind snow connecting adam driver Kylo ren and ray or um uh, yeah ray you know him coming in like stop and blast the roof off of the mountaintop not the mountaintop but blast the roof off the little hut that was cool i liked that a lot you know she was mad hitting him hitting him with the bow staff or whatever he just like you know pew, 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 and she knocked him down he caught himself with the force i like all that that's pretty cool but um you know uh mark hamill did a great job he did but you know i'm really disappointed it was cool that he exerted him i mean that he projected himself across the galaxy badass i mean i wish i can do it you know and uh, i only seen the movie once i may see it again and everybody was saying that like you know after the second or third time they saw the movie that they can tell uh, the second or third time that you know the color ring when he moved his feet the red sand would come up but not when luke did that you know but all oh, that's good um carrie fisher's next um she did a great job as leia um i necessarily was not a fan of her floating through space with the force that looked a little corny but when she put her hand back on the glass and they let her in that's kind of when i clocked back in but you know, I, I just look weird. You know, uh, I, I really wasn't buying it. I'm also glad that Kylo Ren is not the person that blew her up. He was about to, but, you know, they were showing him conflicted or whatever. And uh, he didn't pull the trigger. His henchman did that. So that's cool. But, you know, Leia did a great job. I didn't talk about her too much in my spoiler uh, free free review. But, you know, it's, it's sad that Carrie Fisher's not here anymore. Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Rest in heaven uh you know I'm, I'm so sad that you're not here anymore you know you, you have brought smiles to you know thousands of millions of faces around the world you know from your portrayal of leia or ghana and the star wars so moment of silence for um uh, carrie fisher all right moving on to adam driver as Kylo ren um he was cool you know uh more of the same in the force awakens and i'm not saying that's a bad thing um, you know, he really doesn't like Snoke and we'll get to him in a second, you know, obvious reasons why, but he did a, he did a pretty good job. Um, he was really convincing. Um, you know, I liked the lightsaber battle, the one little thing that he did, you know, we can skip on him. I already talked about Daisy really. Well, I, I like Daisy really. She's grown more from the last film. Um, yeah, she, she just wants, yeah, I, I like her. John Boyega, 
Okay, let's talk about John Boyega and Esfian. And what's the other girl's name? Rose Tico, Kelly Marie Tran. What else has Kelly Marie Tran been in? Wait a minute. I'm looking at this picture right here. She's kind of slim, but in the movie, that was kind of making her look chubby. But, uh, okay, she's been in a lot of TV stuff. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, I thought she was popped up some other stuff, but let me go back. Okay, so I really do like the characters of, um, what's her name again? Finn, I know Finn's name, uh, Rose. I like the character of Finn and Rose. Um, I thought it was funny at the very beginning when she was kind of fanboying or fangirling out like, oh my God, you're Finn or whatever. You're legendary. And, you know, Finn's like, no, no, no. And I respected her like, wait a minute. No, my sister died and you're trying to run away. No. And she shocked him and all that. She was thinking fast. But the whole scene where, or the whole sequence where they went to that casino planet, boom, 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 two thumbs down. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. Complete waste of time like when they was on those little animals and busting through the uh, casino destroying everything i was just like please i don't want to see this no more this is annoying it's boring it's corny as hell and then you had that one ellen you know running or whatever i had to back up because i don't want to hurt y'all ears with the mic i'm just like this is dumb like you know it was real stupid that that whole sequence just was a waste of time i don't care that the little boy at the end of the movie that was setting up for him with the forest thing no I, I, and i'll talk about that later too but i hated the whole thing it was just like a waste of time it was so counterproductive because everything that they was wanting to do in that scene didn't even um didn't even pan out or whatever the plan failed because they ended up doing something else or whatever uh i, I gotta stop saying or oh, whatever people have told me that i need to stop saying it so sorry guys it's a bad habit I'm going to try my best not to say that as much anymore. But um, we also got to see Benicio Del Toro's character there. And his character was completely pointless too. Because he was in the jail cell with him. And as soon as he woke up, he broke out of jail. So I was kind of saying like, bro, I don't. I, if I miss something, let me know in the comments. But I'm just like, okay, why didn't you break out of jail a long time ago? Why did you need them to be in here with you to break out of jail? You know, I, I don't know why. Um uh, we got to see Maz Kanata like briefly in, played by Lupita Nyong'o um, in the little hologram thing. And as soon as she was given the mission to Finn and um, Rose, I was just like, really? A plot within a plot within a plot? Like, I I, I know that's not going to be good. I just did not like the direction that that was going. Because I really do like the very beginning of the film as far as, you know, um, Oscar Isaac's character. Uh, what's his name? Um, I can't forget everybody's name. Paul Dameron. Or whatever he's like the you know the best pilot in the fleet or whatever and he had a much more screen time and this and he did a great job he was known as a fly boy getting into it with laura darren's character um uh, what is her name what is her character's name uh vice admiral Bo vice admiral holdo or holdo um she was just, she was checking in putting it put him in his place but i love the open se opening sequence because uh it started out with uh uh hux or whatever general general hux played by domino gleason and you know people give him a hard time from the force of Wakens, like oh, my God, my God, my God, you know talking like that and stuff but they tried to add some comedy in the beginning like hello can you hear me you know all this good stuff and it was funny but at the same time i thought it was misplaced a little bit because you know i kind of in the very beginning of the film i wanted them just to set the tone of how serious the threat was excuse me and um you know with that joke that kind of just diluted the threat level or whatever um i still chuckled a little bit but the whole sequence for paul dameron and him trying to take off the cannons on that thing on that uh drug knot or whatever that was nice and you know he disobeyed the orders and they brought the bombers in and they tried to bomb the stuff and they a lot of the bombers blew up but i was so at the edge of my seat when uh that one character was you know had the button she was trying to kick it down and she grabbed a little thing and caught the button and when it fell down and it, and we thought she missed i was like oh no and she caught it and then she clicked the button at the last minute that was intense i really did like that or whatever i did not know how the scene was going to end and i think they did a really good job there so the whole opening sequence i loved that it was great it was fantastic and i pretty pretty uh, other than luke throwing the lightsaber over his head um, I love the thing with Luke as well and Daisy Ridley on the uh, island or whatever. Um, as far as the Porgs are concerned, I really did enjoy the Porgs. 
uh, people were just kind of saying like, oh my gosh, are the porgs going to be annoying? You know, I, I never even thought that or whatever during the, you know, during the promotion material of this. And I didn't even pay attention to much. I saw like the first two trailers and I stayed away from everything. I didn't go to no chat rooms, no comment sections, no videos about this or that. I didn't watch no TV spots. I didn't check out no interviews, nothing. I wanted to go into this movie completely cold besides seeing the trailers. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that I did. Now, one of the biggest things that really pissed me off even more than the freaking uh, Mark Hamill not giving a slice of a battle was Snoke dying. Man, I was so gosh darn pissed about that because Snoke was appearing like as a badass because when at the very beginning of the movie when Hux, when they lost and they got that, the dreadnought blown up, that one general came over to Hux and was like, hey man, uh, we got Snoke on the phone, man. He on hold. And Hux is like, all right, I'll get into my room. And then we got the big hologram of Snoke, right? And then he was able to force toss Hux all around and wasn't even in the room. I was like, damn, like Snoke is powerful. And I know I did. The only thing I, I went in going in knowing that b besides the trailers is I heard that Snoke was more powerful than Darth Vader and also the Emperor. So I was like, man, he must be super duper cold. But I was like, okay, in the uh, in the original prequel, not the original um, Star Wars films, and also the prequels, the Emperor was the biggest bad. So in the Force Awakens episode seven, when they introduced Snoke, I was like, okay, where was uh, Snoke this whole time? Who is this guy? You know, like, you know, where was he? Was he the one pulling the strings the whole time? And so they never gave us backstory to Snoke. And so going into this movie, I'm thinking that we're going to get some backstory to Snoke and where he came from. I still don't know where Snoke came from. Did I miss it, guys? Please let me know in the comment section below. So I'm mad about that. I'm like, wait a minute. He died? Like, wait a minute. So I like all his force powers and all that, right? And so then when um, and a lot of people are complaining, and me too, that this movie is kind of still biting off old previous um excuse me, Star Wars films. Because, of course, it's very obvious that Episode 7 copied off Episode 4. So, in Empire Strikes Back, episode 5, Luke was on the uh, place with Yoda training. And he was like, Luke was like, oh, I got to go save my friends. You know, and uh, Yoda was like, you got to stay and finish your training. You know, if you don't finish, you could convert over to the dark side. And he left anyway. Same thing happened in this movie where Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, was like, no, stay here, don't go. And she's like, no, I got to go. I got to go reach him. I'm having a force thing with my with, with Kylo Ren or whatever. And he's like, don't go. And she left. I was like, man, this copying off Empire Strikes Back. And then in The Return of the Jedi, Episode 6, Luke goes into the throne room and faces Darth Vader and the Emperor. And then Daisy Ridley goes into the throne room and she faces Kylo Ren and uh snoke so i'm like they keep copying off past you, i mean they're copying so it didn't copy as much as episode uh seven did before but it still had those elements but snoke was so badass with his force power like he up here I, he just doing like a little flick of the wrist and he raising daisy really up and making her come and go and fling her around and then she tried to use her force powers and bring the lightsaber over and that was real cool she did it like twice and Snoke just over there like, girl, and he controls it just with his two fingers and, and swings it back around and hits her in the end. I'm like, man, I cannot wait to see Snoke fight. This is going to be so badass. You know, like it was just, it was great. So he pulls the lights to the back and then she pulls the one with, uh, with Kylo Ren's tri-saber and he takes that or whatever. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so great. I cannot wait to see Snoke throw down. I'm just thinking, I cannot wait for Luke and Snoke to throw down. This is going to be badass. And then Snoke is giving Kylo Ren the command to slice her down. And then he turning the lightsaber. I'm like, wait a minute. That lightsaber better not go off and kill him. It better not go off and kill him. And then it went off and it was off camera. And I was like, man, I was like, man, I didn't kill Snoke. Snoke probably stopping that, not even looking at it. And the lightsaber is like right there stopping, about to stab him. But he stopped it or whatever. Then it shows him and it went through him. And then he cut him out. I was like, no, really? Are you serious? And then I was like, okay, wait a minute. Maybe that's an illusion. Maybe that's a false body. Maybe he's so powerful. He's going to come put himself back together. But he didn't. He was like really dead. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Are you serious? I, I was so pissed off, man. I, I was like... <laughs> I was already frustrated and bored because of the casino sequence thing. But then when they kill Snoke, I'm like, man, what are they doing? Like, this is horrible. And and uh, Andy Serkis was doing such a great job as 
a pro trans Snoke or whatever, and they killed the man. Like I'm really, I was really the two biggest things that pissed me off was no Luke Skywalker's lightsaber battle and them killing Snoke. So I don't know. So we going in to Episode Nine that's supposed to be the the you know the the thing that caps it all off and the bad guy that we have to beat is they, is is Kylo Ren. Like that's not. That's not exciting to me, to be honest with you. Because Daisy really was able to beat him in episode seven. So she's even more powerful now. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. That's why in my spoiler review, I said I liked the film, but I walked out disappointed. Be and we still don't know where Kyle, Ka not where Kyle ran. We still don't know where freaking Snoke came from. We st and um, we, we don't know. I don't know any backstory from him. And I I wanted more to from um, Daisy Ridley's parents or whatever. Like, we found out that it was, not, oh, you came from nothing. You're nothing to me, but, you know, your parents were just normal. They, they traded you in for, you know, alcohol. I'm like, really? I wanted more than that. I hope that they revealed that it, that it was something more significant in, uh, in uh, episode nine because... I was going to this movie just wanting to know why. I mean, I know people can be born force sensitive and whatnot, but in episode seven, she was so powerful with the force and has zero training and we didn't get to see like necessarily why. So that's just kind of a bummer as well. You know, um, anyway, I talked about them. Uh, Yoda popped up. Uh, he was the puppet Yoda. I like Yoda. That was cool. Uh, I liked that a lot. Um, oh yeah. Frank. I, so I talked about, Luke, Leia, Kylo, Ray, Finn, Poe, Snoke, Mas Kanata, General Hux, CP3PO. He was cool. Captain Phasma. Let's talk about Captain Phasma. I'm disappointed with Captain Phasma because, like, I like her present. But, okay, they barely show her in Episode 7. They barely show her in Episode 8. And I wanted more from her. I wanted a more of a fight between her, her and Finn. And Finn ended up winning. And he has melee training, but she died on accident, you know? And, like, I just kind of feel like, I really, I really hate that casino scene. When, um, when Rose and Finn were to that casino planet or whatever, and it was looking for the master hacker, that whole 20 or 30 minutes could have been gut from the film. And that could have been, that could have been time that, um, Finn was uh, like getting into it with Phasma. They could have given us more backstory on Ray and her parents. They could have given us more backstory on Snoke. Um, that also could have given us more backstory on how Kylo Ren went to the dark side or whatever in that tent or whatever. And he took the, the Knights of Ren, you know, he killed some of them and took six or whatever. Where did the other six go? The other six Knights of Ren, those red guards that was guarding Emperor Snoke or whatever during that lightsaber battle. You know, we don't know. Like all that time, the casino uh, place could have been, you know, given time on screen to develop those other scenes that are much more interesting. You know, but hey, it is what it is. Um, so we got Captain Phasma. Um, as far as um, Poe Dameron learning the lesson that, um, that uh, you know, they had a plan or whatever. And the plan ended up not working either. And what, I found something interesting. So Benicio Del Toro was trying to break into that door, right? And supposedly that was the only door. So he, they break in, but then you got all these other people, bad guys and Phasma and them coming in to stop them. So I'm like, I guess there was multiple doors to this place or there was, I don't know. That that really didn't make sense to me. I, I think they kind of messed up there, but I, I don't know. It's not like a big deal. But um, when Laura Dern was flying, I, when she was like, hey, somebody has to fly the ship or whatever. And I was like, man, this is like 2000 years in the future from now. Y'all don't got autopilot. But anyway, she stayed on the ship. And she did a light speed into that giant, the, into Snoke's ship. That was badass right there. I love that. That was a beautiful shot, beautiful sequence. And it was just completely silent. It just looked beautiful. And I, I really did. I really did like that or whatever. Um, so they did a great job there. That that was lovely. Um, let's see. What else? I want to. Let's see. Uh, I just want to. I'm, I'm just. Chewbacca was cool. BB-8 was cool. Uh, that master code breaker thing was stupid. Um, okay, these are all throwaway characters. So I went over. I talked. I, I wanted to make sure I did not leave out any of the characters. Uh, let me take another swig of water real quick. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I didn't leave out any of the characters. So, um, in the lightsaber battle with uh, Finn, not Finn, but. Uh, Ray and Kylo, that was nice. 
I did like that against those three guards. That was cool. That was the only last step of battle, guys. Uh, so, yeah. You know, they, they just could have given us more. But, I mean, if the biggest bad is uh, Kylo Ren for Episode Nine, that's, like, not that exciting to me. You know? Also, towards the end of the film, I like those Ice Fox. I like the battle on the base. Um... I like the fact that Finn was about to sacrifice himself. You know, I was like, man, Finn is about to die. You know, they're finna kill the brother in this movie, the only brother. But he lived because uh, Rose came over there and knocked him out of the way. Um, I talked about Luke, you know, uh, um, projected himself. Um, but everything else in the film, I really did like. Um, this thing is coming in at over 25 minutes. Yeah, everything else in the film, I, I really did like. Or whatever. Um, I gave this film an eight. Uh, I was gonna lower it to a seven point five, but I'm gonna keep it at an eight because even though while I'm disappointed that we didn't get the lightsaber battle and more from Snoke, those are my expectations, and you cannot judge a film off expectations um, because there was no false advertising. I, I will judge a film based off that, but you know. Um, is there anything else that I want to talk about? Eventually, I'm going to do these live. And, you know, at this time, I can, you know, hey, let me know in the chat room and we can talk about it. But, yeah, guys. So, um, I think that will be it for my spoilers review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. But, guys, what did you think? You can put spoilers in the comments, you know. Uh, I was, I'm not going to ask, have you seen it and all that? Because you probably have if you're watching this. So just let me know uh, what you think in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check me out on my website. Also, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all the good stuff there in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash a review, a spoilers review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. <clears throat> Excuse me. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.